good afternoon. I'm reporting on the election, stunning election of Pedro Castillo in Peru. Reporting in progress. So uh, the thing that's interesting to look at here is um, their relative performance in the provinces. So uh, down here, I've set up a map of uh, uh, Peru and I color coded by level of support. So the, the pinkish red color is very strong Castillo, over 70%, 55 to 70 is the orange, uh, 51 to 55 favor Fujimori is the yellow, and this green is 55 to 69 Fujimori. So Fujimori gets no, does not get above 69 anywhere, whereas uh, Castillo gets uh, over 70 in all of the Andes that we think of when we think of Cusco um, and uh, Machu Picchu and all of that. Um, and another thing we look at here is if she had one, uh, we can see uh, that um, people either loathed her or uh, feared her. Um, because you see 10%, can you imagine only getting 10% in a two-candidate, uh, two-party election in the province of Puno and Lake Titicaca, which I proudly can now say I spent some time in a couple of years ago, uh, or 14% in Juan Cabelli, uh, or whatever, Juan Cabelli, I think is what it's called, also in the high Andes, but um, uh, right around... Um, right here, Juan Cabelica, which is next to Ayacucho, which suffered greatly in the war between the father Fujimori and the Sendero Luminoso. Um, so in these areas where there was a war with the Sendero Luminoso and um, Fujimori's dictatorship, um, he, she gets nothing. So had she been elected like president, she would have, uh, it would have been horrible uh, imagining 18% in this province of Apurimac is the amount of support that she pulled. Where is this Apurimac here? Uh, right here next to Cusco, yes. Uh, then, uh, so just outrageously low uh, uh, figures in the, uh, in the high Andes. Um, the only one she did sort of okay in was Arequipa in that area, but that goes to the coast and she did all right on the coast, Arequipa. Um, she, um, she wasn't, you know, at 18% because it's a mixture of these coastal lands and the Andes. In the Andes, she is uh, pretty much despised. Um, so that's the first observation to make. The second observation to make really is to look at, um, let me save this first of all, this would be Peru by province. And let us look rather at uh, the pink tide, which is where we see the change that's gonna occur in uh, Latin America because of this. So I'm loading this. So um, now we can go out to this level. So, um, with Peru moving over into the progressive column, we now have Peru, Bolivia, Chile soon because of their constitutional convention where their delegates overwhelmingly progressive. Argentina is a non-neoliberal. So we're going to see a block here that's not beholden to any power. It's not going to be beholden to the United States. It's not going to be beholden to China. It's not going to be beholden to Russia. And that there's going to be uh, a sort of resource I don't, uh, uh, management uh, for the good of the people along the Bolivian line, which has been to directly reinvest natural resource sales into poverty eradication directly. Um, and Brazil is likely to flip over to progressives in 2022. Lula is overwhelmingly ahead. Uruguay is sort of a neutral country. For a long time, they had a lovely progressive uh, uh, a president, Mr. Pepe Mujica, who sent Pedro Castillo of Peru uh, a message saying, you must make the market work. Um, and it apparently was a very slow progress for the Uruguayan left, uh, which is, I think, Frente Amplio, the broad front, which it actually means coalition of parties. Also, it's Frente Amplio 
I believe, in Argentina and in Chile. So Brazil will come into this column, leaving only really Paraguay in this area, where they had a coup. Uh, they used um, impeachment to get rid of this uh, priest who was their president, a man of the people. So uh, this is completely changing and transforming the face of South America, because until uh, the constitutional uh, 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 vote for the constitutional uh, convention delegates, Chile was a right-wing country under Piñera, the richest man in Chile, the owner of their airline, the owner of all their uh, little ATM boxes at every little convenience store. Um, Peru was uh, about to go into a hard right uh, mode with this Fujimori. Bolivia almost uh, for a year was under a hard right uh, coup government. So this is a complete reversal other than the case of Argentina. Um, so uh, this is really interesting. Uh, and for, for me, if you mind my making an editorial as a climate uh, activist and somebody very concerned that we only, uh, I mean, as far as I can tell, it's kind of lights out around 2035, the way we're doing things right now. Basically, humanity is toast around 2035. So we need these changes so that we are not all slaves to corporations or to any great power. We need diversity and a, a block of people that in Peru and Bolivia, indigenous, Aymara, Quechua, and the other uh, peoples, uh, even if uh, Pedro Castillo is not coming out with a, a strong environmental message now, it will come very soon because the indigenous community knows what's going on. The people are wise, the people know what's going on. Uh, so um, uh, I think that that should do it for now. We're, uh, there's virtually no way that Castillo can lose at this point. Um, my uh, tally is that there's 77,000 more votes are going to come in for him, roughly still, um, and um, to his favor, that is. Uh, we want to see if um, any extranjeros have reported since I last checked. No. So I uh, He's currently at um, a 50.241, and he's only going to go up, according to my calculations, because his uh, benefit of the uh, of the extranjeros, this is a problem, this should be minus 50. Whoops, I beg your pardon. He's only going to go up by, um, this is a problem, this should update. Um, equals K29. Ah, I see. Okay. Very interesting. So let me see here. Equals sum. So all this time I hadn't quite had it added correctly. 42,000. Okay. 42,000 more votes to his credit. So he should almost double his current lead, which is 52441. 523, there's about 80,000. His lead, he yeah, should end up at around 50.38, I'm guessing. All right, folks, uh, historic day, very hard fought, never such a progressive candidate in the history of Peru since uh, the Tupac Amaru's. Thank you.